we are continuing with our wood design series. If you just found this video, you can go back to the beginning of this playlist where we tabbed the NDS, the NDS supplement, and also SpeedWiz. And then we went on to solve some beam problems in different scenarios. Now we have our first column in a multi-story building. Let's go. The problem states that we have a plan view for the second floor and also for the roof. It is a two-story building as, as shown below and it asks for us to determine if the 6x6 wood column is adequate for the given loads. We're also given all this design data that I'll touch on as we solve the problem. To solve this problem, we again will divide this problem into three steps. The first step will be to derive just the column loads unfactored. The second step will be to run our load combinations and determine which load combination controls. And then the last step will be to actually calculate the capacity of our column and then see if it is adequate. For step one, the column loads, we have dead load, live load, roof live load, and snow load. For simplicity, we are starting out without reducing the roof live load, but we can check that if the roof live load controls, it's a, if it's a load combination that controls, we know that we could reduce that even further. But let's first see if it even controls. If it doesn't control our design, then we don't even need to reduce it because we're not using that design load anyway. Our tributary area is 12 feet by 12 feet, as we can see here from the plan view. And then of course, we're going to design the, col design the column here at the first story because it picks up the load from the second floor and also from the roof. We plug in the numbers and we get the point loads for each load case. Now for step two, we are going to run our load combination. For this problem, we are going with ASD. If we were using LRFD, we would have, of course, different load combinations, but also different factors from the NDS. When we run our numbers here, we find that load combination five appears to control, but I want to highlight something with this problem that is applicable to wood design in general when you're running a bunch of load combinations. When we get the capacity of our column, we're going to need C sub D, right? The load duration factor. And I wrote down here all the different factors that we would have for each load combination. C sub D for load combination five is 1.15 because we have snow load. C sub D for all the other load combinations is equal to one because we either have, because we have live load. And I'll show you now in NDS where to get C sub D and also how we can use C sub D to actually determine which load combination controls. In table 2.3.2 from the NDS, we see all these different factors for C sub D and if you read this paragraph here, it will say that C sub D for the shortest duration load in the combination of loads shall apply for that load combination. And also that you have to run the calcs for all the load combinations and then determine which one controls using C sub D because C sub D is going to increase your capacity. So if we go back here to our table, if our load combination has snow load, has live load and has dead load. Snow load is the shortest load duration, so it will control. If it only has live load and dead load, the shortest one is live load, so 1.0 will be our C sub D. Now that we saw our code provisions, all that we need to do is divide our loading demand by C sub D, and we're going to get a different load, right? An adjusted loading demand. And if I do that, I notice that my highest number is load combination one right here. It is not load combination five as we had previously thought. So by just doing this quick exercise, I can quickly spot which load combination is actually going to control. And this is because we know that this C sub D in our song number design value, it is the only factor that's actually increasing our capacity. So we just decrease our demand, bring C sub D to the other side of the equation to find out what our adjusted demand really is. Let me know in the comments below if this makes sense to you guys. I'll go through the next steps and I think it will make things a little bit 
more clear. Now in step three, we're actually going to check if our column has enough capacity to take that load in demand we just calculated in step two. The first thing we need to check is our slenderness, which just like any other material, it's some sort of KL over R. In our case, it's KL over D for our slenderness ratio. Our K is one because we assume that our column is pinned at the foundation and it's also pinned at the top. So because of that, our effective length is the same as just our clear length between the foundation and the first story. Our D is 5.5 inches. Remember that the nominal size of a six by six column is a little bit less than six inches and you can go to the NDS supplement to find all the dimensions for different members. In our case, our slenderness ratio is 19.6, which is less than 50, so we are okay. Now you may ask, Homelu, where did you find this check? Well, let me show you in NDS. If you go to chapter three, section 3.7.1, there is this clause right here that says that the slenderness ratio LE over D, LE being K times L, shall not exceed 50 except during construction, which it could go all the way up to 75. In our case, it's not during construction, so our limit is to 50. So we're good with the slenderness. Now, step 3.2 is calculating C sub P. Now, what is C sub P? I'll throw this equation here to you, but I'll also take you to the NDS to show you all the different adjustment factors that we need to take into account. All right, so in chapter four, table 4.3.1, for SOM number, we are checking compression parallel to grain in our column design, and we see all these different adjustment factors. We already touched base on C sub D, which is the one that will be greater than one and will essentially increase our capacity. All the other factors, we can go back to the problem statement and check if they are one or not, I will give you a hint. Yes, they will be all one because the problem statement states that they are one. And C sub F, when we go to the table to calculate C sub F, it will also show that it is one. The only one that may not be one is this column stability factor. And it is essentially to take into account global stability or buckling of the column. Just like in steel and in concrete and any other material, the column can fail in buckling in wood design it's no different if you have a column that's really long this c sub b fact c sub p factor will be very small so let's see now how we calculate that if we go back to chapter 3 section 3.7 we have all that we need here to calculate c sub p it is a long equation with all these factors but it's all number crunching so you can even build a spreadsheet if you want with all these different factors to calculate C sub P for several different scenarios. But I'll just explain some of these factors here before we punch in the numbers. First, we need to calculate F sub C E, which is this number here. We need to calculate the minimum, the adjusted minimum modulus of elasticity for our member. This factor C here is 0 0.8 for us because we have sawn lumber. We don't have a timber pole, a pile, and it's, it's not a glued laminated timber or any of this. The other factor is this F sub C asterisk. It is the adjusted design value for compression with all the adjustment factors except C sub P. So we can actually calculate this first. We can then calculate this other guy here after that, we plug it all into this equation and then it will spit out C sub P. Know that we have our, our slenderness ratio embedded here. It's not as intuitive to see what it does to this equation, but essentially the higher your slenderness ratio is, the lower C sub P it is going to be. Okay, now let's go back to our problem and see what we have. I wrote the equation down here. We have all of our factors as one. F sub C is a thousand PSI. You can go to table 4D from the NDS supplement to find that number. So we find that our 
F sub C asterisk is 1,000 PSI. The next thing is the E min prime that we'll calculate. We find the same from the same table 4D in the supplement. 580,000 PSI, all the adjustment factors are 1. So we have our number here. And then the last factor that we calculate with our slenderness ratio is 1241 PSI. And C is equal to 0 0.8 because we have song number. Based on all of that, I usually calculate this ratio first, F sub CE and F sub C asterisk. I find it as 1.24 and then use this number to plug into my big equation right here. At the end, we get 0 0.76. So essentially, we're reducing our capacity by this factor here. Now that we calculated C sub P, let's do our capacity check, which will be step number 3.3. .3. For our capacity check, since F sub C asterisk has all the adjustment factors except C sub P, we can just multiply C sub P to that F sub C asterisk. So we get here 760 PSI. We can then use that number to calculate our allowable point load. And our allowable point load is 23 kips. The required point load, the demand is, is 21.2 kips from load combination one that we determined in step two. If I'm looking at the utilization of load combination one, it is 92%, right? Our demand is 21.2, our capacity is 23. Now, if I'm looking at the demand of load combination five, if we go back here and we say, well, load combination five controls, but in reality, when I reduce it by C sub D, it's only 18.5 kips. So if I were to run my calculations using load combination five, let's see what I would get. I would get 80% of utilization. So the lesson here is that we need to make sure that we run the critical load combination. Otherwise, we could be running load combination five and thinking that we are only 80% utilized when in reality we're, we are 92%. So it's something that definitely you need to watch out for on the PE exam or SE exam, and of course, also in practice. In summary, our column is adequate for the given loads. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to dig deeper into wood design, I will have this playlist linked at the end of this video for you to check out the progression that we have gone through so far to get to this video. If you have suggestions for more videos for this playlist, let me know in the comments below or different materials, different types of design that you want me to do a series on. Also, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.